Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing the broadcast with your friends. I do appreciate it. God bless you all. Happy Thursday to everybody. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. God bless you once again. I pray that you are having a great day. Hey, cuz. God bless you. God bless you, house the family. I'm back home. Okay. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. I hope you still, I hope you enjoyed your trip. Praise God. Oh, I'm trying to plug in my laptop before it shut down. Please bear with me. Bear with me, please. Bear with me. Praise God. Praise God. Bear with me just for a few minutes. Not even a few minutes. A few seconds. A few seconds. Where are all the victorious people today? Praise God. Praise God. Just give me a few seconds trying to log on to another platform. Okay, I can't do it like that. Let me do it like this. Uh, so hungry. I don't know about you guys, but I am hungry. Okay, there we go. There we go. Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your patience. God bless you. God bless you today. If you have not shared the broadcast with your friends, I pray that you will kindly share the broadcast that the word of the Lord can go around the world, that we can reach as many people for Christ as possible. I thank you guys for tuning in. I know that some of you may be on your lunch break at this time, so I do appreciate you grabbing your lunch and tuning into the word with me. Uh, for those of you that's your first time on this broadcast, I just want to introduce myself to you on Periscope. You can go ahead and look at my bio. Go to my website. It will uh, tell you a little bit more about me and what I do. Those of you that's on Facebook, I am Karen Proctor. Maybe someone has uh, shared this broadcast with you. Karen Proctor, uh, Apostle in the Lord's Church author, Christian counselor, and life coach. I'm here to share the word of God. Hopefully, something will be said to edify your spirit today. And if it is, I'm going to ask you to share the broadcast with your friends. Hey, Tia, Flea, thank you for tuning in. And so today, I want to talk about issues of the heart. Issues of the heart. I hope you guys can see me good if you can see me, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. I don't want to uh, just assume that everything is clear and it's not. So we want to talk about issues of the heart today. And I want to share just a few scriptures with you. 
I promise you, I won't be long. I'm going to do my very best not to be long. So if you haven't subscribed to my page yet, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button. That way you would know when I am on and we can do life together. Um, so we're going to talk about issues of the heart today. I have three scriptures that I want to share about, share with you. Uh, I believe that we are still in the season of spring. I, I, I think we are. And uh, a lot of people, when springtime come, we do what we call spring cleaning. We clean up our house. We take away all the items, the clothes that we are not using no more. We declutter the house and we clean it up. We give it a really good cleaning. Uh, like in the times that we're working with so busy, we can't really get down to the nitty gritty, get in those corners, dig up that dirt, wipe out those window seals, uh, uh, just take the water hose, put it on those uh, windows and screen. And uh, if you still polish your furniture, maybe you are polishing your furniture, cleaning out your stove, your refrigerator, whatever it is, however you spring clean. I know that everybody don't clean the same way, but that's what we normally do in the springtime. We call it spring cleaning. And so not only do we want to clean our physical house, we want to clean our temple as well. The house in which we live in, in which our spirit man live in, which is our body. Guys, let me know if you are there. I can't really tell if you guys are still here with me. So please let me know. Let me know if you are still connected. Amen. So I want to talk about uh, issues of the heart. We want to clean those hearts out. Because the Bible says, uh, who can stand before the Lord? Only those with a, with a pure heart and clean hands can stand before the Lord. A pure heart. Those are the only people that can really, really stand in the presence of God. So again, I want to just share with you today from the uh, subject issues of the heart. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I come and approach the throne of grace that you will have mercy upon me, have mercy upon the viewers and the listeners of this broadcast. Lord God, we pray that you would just create in us a clean heart today. Give us uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, Oh, God, in wisdom to partake of your word. Now, Lord God, we bind up any interference that, that may come from the enemy, any interference in the airway, uh, any matter of interference. We bind it. We take authority over it in the name of Jesus, and we loose the word of God today. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Thursday's Midday Breakthrough Hour. Uh, I pray that since you have been viewing the broadcast on Thursdays, I pray that you have been getting a breakthrough in some area, in some capacity of your life. Uh, you cannot hear the word of God and not get a breakthrough. <laughs> If not, I don't know. I mean, if so, I, I don't I don't know what's wrong. But, you know, God word come to break up the fallow ground. God word come to 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 heal. His word come to deliver, to set free, to uh, set the captives free. And with that being said, again, I want to just jump straight in to the topic issues of the heart. And when I think about issues of the heart uh it's like when you go to your cardiologist, what he's looking for to see if there are any blockages there. He's trying to see uh, if it's any blockages there. Are your valves uh, free to flow? The blood is free to flow in it. Is it anything that's going to cause uh, you a heart attack? Is it anything that will prevent the heart from pumping at the capacity that it shall pump? And so... Uh, he wants to declutter that and and if it's not working right, he puts you on meds and 
uh, maybe a uh, physical exercise regimen and uh, tell you to take the stress away out of your life if it's not hereditary or something like that. So we want to get the heart beating today. We want to get the heart pumping. We want to get the heart regulated for God. And we just want to take out anything in our heart that may be a hindrance from us moving into the direction in which God wants us to move. We want to take out anything that may be a hindrance that will uh, stop us from moving in the direction that God will have us to move. If you have not uh, shared the broadcast yet, I'm going to ask you to share the broadcast. That way we can get as many viewers as possible, not just for numbers, but for people to be set free, for people to be healed, for people to be delivered. Amen. And so Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. He said, guard your heart, for everything that you do, everything that I do, flows from the heart. So, in essence, we ought to live in a gated community. Yes, your heart should be a gated community, whereas anything and anybody cannot easily uh, attach itself to your heart. Proverbs chapter 4 and 23 says again, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So every even little thoughts that come up in your mind, uh, if you know those thoughts are not like God, what the Bible tells us to do, he say, cast it down, cast down every imagination and every high thing that exhort itself against the will of God in your life. Anything that's a, against the will of God, guard your heart from it. Uh, it's amazing that the Bible have so much to say about the heart because listen the heart if our heart is not beating right and the blood is not flowing through the heart then that means we are ceasing to exist so it is vital that we guard our heart according to the word of God it is important that you live in a gated community now when I say gated community me I mean your spirit God your heart you cannot let anything uh, flow in and out of your heart you have the master key you know when it's junk that you can just uh, throw it away Throw it away. Do not let it affect your life. Sometimes people are holding on to things from years and years and years. And, and some of the people you're thinking about is uh, dead. They don't even live on this earth no more. Some of the people that you're holding in your heart has gone on about their business, even forgot the issue uh, what you're still holding on to. So guard your heart. Even as the springtime, declutter, declutter your heart. Any issue, any situation, any person, hallelujah, that's going to cause you to suffer, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And so, it's like I said, it's amazing that the Bible has so much to say about the heart. Uh, for instance, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 19 says, For out of the heart come evil thoughts. For out of the heart come evil thoughts. Uh, he says, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witnesses, false testimony, slander. All of that stuff start right there in your heart. That's what the Bible says. This is not something that I'm saying, but I'm co-signing on what the word of God says. He said, out of your heart come all the evil thoughts, every evil thought, every uh, evil imagination starts right here is planted in the heart. So when the enemy come to try to bring that junk to you, bring it to me. I know what I do. I immediately try to cast it down. I don't want to entertain anything that's going to stop me from having a bright future, from having a bright day. Again, that's why Proverbs 4 and 23 says, above all else, above anything else you do, guard your heart, 
for out of it flows the issues of life. And he said, everything flow right from your heart. Now, I want to uh, just share uh, three scriptures very briefly with you to show you that, um, just show you from the Bible that there were even people in the Bible that had issues of the heart. Uh, you are not an isolated incident. I'm not an isolated incident. We are not an isolated incident. You know, the enemy, he comes to come, steal, kill, and destroy the people of God. Sometimes you feel like you are all alone in what you're going through, what you are feeling, the attack that you have been experiencing. Well, the Bible said that there is nothing new under the sun. There were even people in the Bible that had issues within their heart. Uh, and we can see how some of these issues, when we don't correct the issues in our heart, when we don't correct it, uh, sometimes it can cause your demise. Yes, it can cause your demise physically, mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually. Some people are just operating on a wing in a prayer. They're just operating on hot air. Why? Because they have not consulted. They have not dealt with the issues of their heart. If you are here, let me know that you are here. For some reason, I can't tell if the viewers are still with me. But nevertheless, I'm going to press forward. And the first person that I want to mention that came to my heart was uh, David. Yes, King David. Everybody says that David was a man after God's own heart. In fact, the Bible says that uh, David was a man after his own heart, but David had some issues in his heart. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We are not exempt. It doesn't matter uh, what your position may be. You may be in leadership. You may be the uh, head of a major corporation, a mother, a father. I, it doesn't matter what your position may be. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity may be, your age or uh, any of those things, you can still have issues in your heart. And so David had an issue in his heart. And the issue that was in David's heart was lust. Yes, lust. I just read out of uh, Matthew 15 and 19. He said he talks, it talks about uh, sexual immorality. And David was faced with this issue, even though he was the king, but he was faced with sexual immorality as an issue of his heart. We see in Psalms uh, 51 and verse 3, it says, uh, David says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. And verse 10, he goes on to say, create, he took, uh, he took ownership. That's a, that's a, a way to deal with the issues of your heart. David took ownership of the issue in his heart. He faced uh, what his problem was. And sometimes we can't clean our heart out if we're not willing to face the issues in our heart. But David did. In verse 10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit. So at this time, David uh, went with Bathsheba sexually, got involved with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was not his wife. Bathsheba was a married uh, woman. But David came to the point where he knew that what he did was uh, a sinful act. So he asked the Lord, he says, God, I know my sin is ever before me. And the only way that I'm going to get rid of this uh, by asking you to create in me a clean heart and to renew in me a right spirit. And so today, whatever it is you may be facing, ask the Lord to create in you a clean heart because God uh, he wants us to make it. Jesus is rooting for us. This is why he put his messengers on the earth. Amen. So that we may be confronted with these things to give us the opportunity to get it right. And so the next person that came to my mind when I begin to think about issues of the heart, it's a conference uh, that I do. 
uh, from time to time. Um, I don't really keep up with it like I should. When I say keep up with it, I mean uh, have this conference as often as I should. But this just came in my spirit uh, the other day to just uh, to deal with the issues of the heart, to confront the issues of the heart. And as I began to think on that, these three people came to my mind. David, I, I've already uh, gave you David. So now I want to give you Judas. Yes, Judas also had an issue of the heart. We know that Ju Judas was one of Jesus' original 12 disciples. He walked with Jesus. He was privileged to sit with Jesus, to be a part of Jesus' uh, camp, to be a part of Jesus' camp. And you would think that a person that uh, was given the privilege and the opportunity to be mentored, to be trained, to be imparted into by Jesus himself uh, would not have an issue of the heart. But Judas likewise had an issue of the heart. And what was Judas' issue? Judas had an issue of betrayal. And so sometimes uh, God has placed you around people in leadership, around prominence people, and sometimes the spirit of uh Portrayal can uh, set in and it makes you want to sell the person out for a higher price uh, to the highest bidder. Oh, if I divulge this information to uh, the person, uh, my uh, leader counterpart, then maybe I'm going to gain prominence on another side. Because where I'm at, it seemed like it's taking too long for me to... to uh, to climb up the ladder. So I'm going to sell this person out. And so if that's something that you are dealing with, I want you to be mindful of that. And just uh, be like David did. Ask God to create in you a clean heart and to renew in you a right spirit. Don't hang out with someone uh, that you're supposed to give your loyalty to and then sell them out on the other hand, like Judas did. And so Luke chapter 22 and verse 3 says, Then entered Satan, Satan unto Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. See, the Bible say, Then entered Satan. And so anytime something is negative, anytime something is evil, anytime something goes against the principle of God, don't let it manifest in your heart. Pull it down. Cast it out the minute it enters your heart. If you don't, you'll find yourself like Judas uh, found himself. At the end, when Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, at the end, he felt really bad and he felt sorry for what he did. <laughs> and Judah end up hanging himself. He hung himself and the Bible say all of his bowels, all of his guts exploded out of his body. Uh, and we don't want this happening to us. Judah, it was too late for him. He committed suicide. David didn't let his sin uh, I won't say go that far, but he dealt with his sin. And today we need to deal with, we need to confront the issues of our heart, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, like uh, Matthew 15 and verse 19 says again, uh, if it's just plain old evil thoughts, if it's uh, murder, uh, adultery, sexual immorality, uh, theft, false testimony, slander. I don't care what it is. Deal with it. Do not let it get the best of you. Uh, your heart should be surrounded by a gated community. Yes. Whereas the enemy cannot just so easily. Yes, sometimes uh, crooks, sometimes unwanted guests, sometimes slip through a gated community, and sometimes negative thoughts and the plan of the enemy uh, may just slip through 
But once you become cognizant of it, once you become aware of it, pull it down. Pull it down. Dismiss it. Send it back to the sender. And so the last person that I want to show you by way of the Holy Scripture that had a issue of the heart that did not deal with that issue was Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, this couple. At this time, uh, you know, so all people can have things in common, that the saints will have things in common, meaning that it will not be, would have been uh, people that had food and people that didn't have food, people that had a place to live and people that didn't have a place to live, people that had clothing and didn't have clothing, vice versa. So they say, how could we rectify this problem? So we're going to have all things in common. And so they came up with this, this plan to say, well, for those that have property, uh, if you want, this was not uh, a command. This was a suggestion. Uh, if you want, you can sell your property and turn the money over to the apostles. And then they will distribute uh, to the people to meet the needs of the people. And so they did not say, well, the Lord say. No, they did not say the Lord say. But this is just a plan. This is a strategy that we can come up with that all the people of God can have all things in common. And so some people agreed. And they went and sold their property. And this is where you see sometimes if you're in a church setting and there's an apostle and they come and they bring money and say, oh, let's lay money at the apostle's feet. And so these people, they sold their property and they bought the money and they uh, sold, they sold it, bought the money, laid the money at the apostle's feet. They were going in and out, in and out. And so here comes this guy by the name of Ananias. He <laughs> stood in front of the apostle. Yes, he stood in front of uh, the apostle Peter. I, I believe it. Yes, the apostle Peter, Acts chapter 5. And uh, the Holy Spirit, sometimes uh, the issue of the heart, let me, uh, let me digress. The issue of the heart that Ananias and his wife Sapphira had was lying, lying, lying. When they came in, the apostle Peter say, Ananias, he gave a portion of what he made off of his house and laid it at the apostle's feet. But Peter being filled with the Holy Spirit knew by the Holy Spirit, only, only the Holy Spirit could have uh, revealed the heart of Ananias to Peter. He says, uh, Ananias, is this everything? Ananias says, yes. <laughs> so I want to read Acts chapter 5 and verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? He said, why has Satan, why have you allowed Satan to fill your heart to lie, to lie to the Holy Ghost? Just going back, I told you about Judas. We saw how Judas, uh, Satan entered Judas' heart. We see how Satan it has now uh, entered the heart of Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. He says, uh, you're not lying to me. And I, 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 I uh, get this stuff sometimes as well. You know, uh, sometimes people come to you and they ask for prayer or they ask, uh, will you seek God for me? What is God saying to you? Uh, I need a prophetic word. I, I need the word of the Lord. And, and God will have you to minister to them. And you begin to ask them certain questions and they'll go, mm -mm, no, uh, yeah, uh, just blatantly lie. And, and right then and there, the spirit of God is already telling me, you know what? She is lying. He is lying. See, you think that 
Ananias thought he was lying to Peter, but he wasn't lying to Peter. He was lying. The Bible says that Satan filled his heart to lie to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just, we are God's agents in the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is not going to to call you to walk in a certain dimension with him and not be aware of the lies, of the, the schemes and uh, the devices of the enemy. So back to Ananias, he had an issue of the heart of lying. So much so till he lied to the Holy Spirit. He saw the man Peter, but he could not recognize in the spirit that Holy Spirit is the one that anoint and authorize to do the work of the Lord. Amen. And so with that being said, before we end the spring season, uh, we want to deal with the issues of our heart. We want to confront them. We don't need to wait for someone else to check us. Who can check you? better than anybody else, yourself. In fact, before you even go to the doctor uh, to get a checkup concerning your heart, there are some things that's going on internally that will draw you to the doctor. That's the reason why you're, you end up at the doctor's office. That's the reason why you end up at the hospital, in the emergency room. Why? Because you are the first person that can feel those symptoms, that knows that something uh, is going wrong in your body. You're not feeling usual. You're not feeling yourself 100. And so as a preventative mechanism, what do you do? We run to the doctor. What do we do? If it's that bad, we run to the emergency room. Why? Because we're trying to save our life. We don't want to get messed up no further than what we are at this point. And so with all of that, physical Versus the spirit. You have an opportunity. To check your heart. We used to say back in the days. I know I'm very old school. Check yourself. Before you wreck yourself. This is something that we. As children of God. As sons and daughters. Of the most high God. Are to check ourselves. Every now and again. Did I say that right? Did I do that right? Oh, you know that's a lie, okay? Well, evict that lying spirit. Amen? Somebody say a little white lie. A lie is a lie. You know you cheated. Mm-hmm. You know whatever it is you are involved in. We're not, I'm not here to point fingers at anybody. I'm only here to say what God has laid on my heart. Amen? So, before... The season is over before the sunset. Let's make right what's wrong. Let's make right what's wrong. And I'm not just sharing this for you to check what's wrong to make it right. You know, I have to minister this stuff, uh, stuff my own self. I have to take a dose of this stuff myself. I have to check myself to see if my ways please God. And if my ways don't please God, then I need to uh, do whatever it is. Amen. Whether it's going to beg somebody pardon, whether it's to do what God tell me to do, uh, whether it's to stop doing what I'm doing. Amen. We got to check our own self before we wreck ourselves. Amen. So I just wanted to share that word with you today issues of the heart and if you have any issue in your heart amen i want you to deal with it now uh because the next second it's not promised to us and when we meet our maker face to face we want to hear him say well done thy good and faithful servant enter into your time of rest <laughs> So 
Yes, there's a lot of issues going on. People like to say he got issues, she got issues. But if the truth be told, all of us, all of us have issues, but we need to deal with it. If we ignore the issues, they're not going away. We can't just ignore them. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let's see who we have here. Glory be to God. Buffering every three or four words. Amen. I'm here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Alicia. Elisa for joining. Thank you, Nadia. Minister Nadia. Thank you, Minister um, Humphrey. God bless you. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if there is any other person that is viewing me, thank you for tuning in. And even for those that will come back to watch the replay, I want you to put those comments up there. I want you to like. I want you to share. Amen. That the word of the Lord will go around the world and touch as many people for the honor and the glory of God. So I'm going to end with this prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. We thank you for the, the word that has been shared. Father, we thank you right now because you chastise those that you love. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to get it right. And Father, whatever the issues may be in our heart that we are struggling with, we know that you are a very present help in the time of trouble. And so God, we put ourselves on your mercy today. Father, we ask that you will have mercy today, Father. Father, we pray that we will be uh, humble enough to say, yes, I do have an issue. And Father, I thank you for sending us help right now that we can get it together. And Father, we just repent of anything that we have done or that we are doing that does not please you. Anything in action, thought, or deed, anything that we have did to sin against you, Father, to grieve and quench the Holy Spirit, to sin against mankind, our sisters and brothers, Father, we repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, teach us to cast all of our cares upon you for you care for us, oh God. Teach us to release those things, those burdens. Father, you told us that we can bring our burdens to you, Lord God. Father, we cast every burden unto you, Father. And Lord God, thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for that person that drink, that drink. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that drink just to take their problems away. Father, I thank you right now that you are sending help out of Zion for that person right now, that they don't have to drink their problems away, Father, that they will be sober enough to deal with and confront the issue. Father, you say that uh, if we are just and willing to confess our sins, you are, if we are just... No, I'm sorry. If we are willing to confess our fault, you are willing to forgive us. And so, Father, I thank you right now. We confess our faults, even those hidden issues of the heart. We confess them, oh God, because we know one thing about you. You are a secret revealer, just like you revealed to the apostle Ananias about Apostle Peter about Ananias. Lord God, we thank you right now, Father, that they don't have to wait until they get in front of the man of God. Hallelujah for the truth to be revealed. Father, we humble ourselves right now, Father, under your mighty hand. And Father, we thank you for how you're going to move in these situations in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And amen. Well, God bless you, beloved. Thank you for joining the broadcast. Amen. If you haven't subscribed to the page, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. You can still give those hearts, even if you are watching the replay. Uh, if you want to connect with me, you can do so by going to my website at www.karenproctor.com and where it says leave a note and connect with the apostle go ahead and drop a line or two amen and if you are one of the people that asked me for the new book that has just been released 
uh, prophets and the prophetic. I uh, ran out and I have a new shipment. So hit me up. If you get the book from me, I'll autograph it. But if you get it off of uh, Bonds and Nobis, Amazon dot com, it will not be autographed. So for those people that have reached out to me, holla. God bless you guys. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.